Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss uh, further into limit laws and now look at the proof of the quotient law. Basically, this is law five of the limit limit laws overview video, and you can see that in the video link below in the description. Basically, this limit law states the limit as x part j of fx divided by g of x is equal to the limit as x part j of fx divided by the limit as x part j a of g of x if the bottom limit here g of x as x approaches a is not equal to zero so you can't divide by zero because that's not defined ba and basically you could write this as we're in words as basically the quotient law the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits provided the limit of the of the denominator is not zero now before i uh, prove it i just want to first rewrite the limit as x approaches a of fx equal to l just write it as l and limit as x approach a of g of x is right as m so basically we could rewrite that quotient law as as limit as x approach a of uh, fx divided by g of x just equals to l divided by m and now in the proof i am going to be using the precise definition of a limit and now first i'll just recap on it quickly see my video link uh, in my earlier video in the video link below uh, basically on more on precise definition examples etc I'm, I'm not going to go over too much right now but basically recap if you have limit as x is a of fx and it equals to l then if for every number uh, which is greater than zero we'll call it epsilon here there is a number delta which is also greater than zero such that the difference fx minus l the absolute value is less than epsilon whenever you have x uh, minus a is less than uh, this delta here. So basically as you approach this a value you're getting really, really small that interval and basically you're within this number which is basically every number. So you could be as really really small and you're still getting you're still approaching this limit right here. Okay, so now I will look at the proof for this uh, quotient law and before I, I actually get to the proof I will prove that this is true first. And what I'll be showing is basically the limit as x approaches a of 1 divided by g of x is equal to 1 divided by m right here. And then once I prove this, then I'll then we could basically use law 4 or the product law, which I showed in my earlier video, to basically prove the quotient law. Now to prove this, we basically apply the precise definition and basically find, uh, we, we just apply this uh, delta and epsilon uh, method right here. So basically we'll have at 1 over g of uh, absolute value of 1 over g of x minus 1 over m so we'll have it less than this this uh, epsilon here whenever yeah, whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than this delta here so we just need to find this like my earlier uh, videos on proving product and sum law we just need to find this delta because remember we're given this one and this one is any number basically any number uh, which is uh, greater than zero and now to prove it, uh, basically to, uh, to help look for this one, this number right here, we're just going to rearrange this one. And the way to rearrange it, we can multiply both the top and bottom on both sides, basically by the uh, m, m times g right here. So we find a common denominator, and in this case, we'll just make it m times g. So we'll times m divided by m on the left side, on this one here, minus this one g of x divided by g of x times it by 1 over m right here. So that's what this part equals right now, and then this one is just going to be now absolute value of m over yeah, over g of x times m, and then minus g of x divided by g of x times m. So the same common denominator, and basically this equals to absolute value of m minus g of x right here, divided by now g of x times by m. And this absolute value right here. Now, now this equals to, because you're dividing absolute value divided by absolute value, and we could just put them separately right here. So this could be just m minus g of x absolute value divided by this absolute value of g of x. It's not, it's not gonna change anything right here. Yeah, it's not gonna change because even if this is negative, all negative both sides is gonna be positive regardless right here. And now, and in fact, we could also rearrange these two I'll sh just to make it more convenient. So we have g of x minus m absolute value. Yeah, and then divided by absolute value of g of x uh, times m right here. This one, it doesn't matter if you're m minus g of x or g of x minus m because you're taking the absolute value, so it's going to be the same answer. And now when helping to find out uh, that, that delta that we're looking for, we'll break up this little, um, this absolute value divided by absolute value into two parts. So we could write basically, yeah, basically since we're given the limit as, as g of x, of g of x as x approach j is equal to m right here, so we're given that, so by the precise definition, we must have something like absolute value of g of x 
minus m right here. It's going to be less than a uh, less than this epsilon right here. We'll call it epsilon one just to distinguish from the one we have. Remember, this is any number greater than zero whenever. Yeah, x minus a is less than delta 1 here. So we must have this case here. We're calling this delta 1 because this is separate from our other delta. So we have this one. And now this one, this epsilon 1, yeah, this epsilon 1 is just any number greater than 0 right here. And since it's that, we're just, we could just choose whatever it, it can be. So I'll choose in this case, I'll explain why later, uh, absolute value of m divided by t. Well, this one, uh, later on, you'll see that this will help cancel and simplify things. So we'll choose this one right here because it's any number, and this is any number. And thus, we'll just have uh, absolute value of g of x minus m is less than now this this epsilon one, which is uh, absolute value of m divided by two. And now we've basically dealt with the top part of this initial uh, absolute value. This one, so we have this one here. We're just trying to find a delta right now. But in, first, we'll we'll just rewrite the epsilon. So we'll have this epsilon, this absolute value of m divided by two. So now, what this means now, we could write absolute value of m as equal to absolute value of m minus g of x plus g of x. We're not changing anything. I'll explain wh why I'm doing this uh, soon. Basically, this is just a clever method my calculus book found out. So if we just write this, we're not changing anything right here because minus g of x plus g of x can be zero, so they cancel. But now using triangular inequality, and the triangular inequality states uh, absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b. You can see the video link below uh, on proof of this one right here. It's pretty straightforward, but just uh, yeah, watch the video. It's pretty interesting. And I use this in a lot of these proofs for the limit, limit laws. So now once we apply this to basically, this we'll call it a, this is b, then this one we're going to be writing it as right here. And just applying it, we have uh, this this uh, absolute value, which is going to be less than equal to uh, the separate of this one, m minus g of x absolute value plus g of x. And now this one, m minus g of x or g of x minus m, because we have the absolute value around it, is going to be less than equal to m absolute value of m divided by 2. So then this whole thing is going to be less than equal to, or I'll just write it here, less than equal to now. This is going to be absolute value of m divided by 2 plus g of x right here. Now since uh, this one here equals to m, uh, we could rearrange this now as m, and then we just subtract m, uh, absolute value of m divided by 2 on both sides. And now this is going to be less than g of x, and it's common denominators times by 2, divided by 2, we're not changing anything, so minus it out. So we're going to get now, this is uh, less than equal to, so we get, this is m absolute value divided by 2 is less than g of x. And now since we applied basically the same m divided by 2 here, this is also whenever you have x minus a is less than this uh, delta 1 here. So we're using the same x values. And thus now if we write the denominator of that absolute value uh, we were looking at, so this is going to be absolute value of g of x times it by m. This just equals to now, well we can just separate these ones into absolute values because the value is not going to change. So g of x absolute value times it by absolute value of m right here. And now this g of x, we just show that is greater than, yeah, this one's greater than m divided by 2, our absolute value of m divided by 2. And if it's greater than, since you're dividing by something greater than it, it's going to be, it's going to have to be less than, now this value right here, this is going to be now 2 divided by absolute value of m right here. Or you could just uh, rewrite this one just to get a better idea right here. So if you have absolute value of m divided by 2 is less than g of x, then 1 over g of x is going to be greater than, this is be 2 divided by absolute value of m right here. Or yeah, or you could just move this to this side and move these all, all times uh, divided by m and times by 2 on this side. So you get this one right here. So it's going to be less than this times it by, well, 1 over m. That's this part right here. And now when you have absolute value of m times absolute value of m, we're going to have now less than equal to 2. This is going to be m squared here, absolute value of m times absolute value of m. And uh, anything squared is always going to be positive, so that's our answer uh, for this part right here. And now, uh, n since we're using precise definition of the limit, there also exists, because remember, we have that epsilon, which is any number. So right now, we have to have g of x minus m. We're just going to have another number right here. This is, let's call it epsilon 2. And this equals 2. Now we're just going to write it as m squared divided by 2 times the regular epsilon that we were uh, 
initially had right here. Because remember, this is just any number greater than zero here, and this is a number greater than zero. And I'll explain why I'll do this later. Just, just it's gonna cancel stuff out later on. And basically, this is whenever we have, yeah, whenever we have x minus a absolute values less than delta two right here. This is just a new delta. We have to have this new delta. We don't know what it is, but we there must exist here if we have this less than this m squared divided by two times epsilon right here. Now, in order to, for these uh, epsilon, um, this deltas to work, we just simply let the delta we're looking for, this is delta general right here, is equal to minimum of yeah, delta 1 and delta uh, 2 right here. So if it's equal to uh, delta 2, then this one, if this is less than delta 1, then then both cases are, are, uh, have been basically uh, yeah, satisfied right here. So if it's uh, delta 2, if it's delta 2 is less than delta 1, then this number is also going to be less than delta 1 here. So that, that satisfies that condition. Um, and now uh, when we put it all together right now, uh, and if we have thus for uh, this, this condition, x minus a absolute value is less than this delta, which we have found out, and it's just going to be, we're just selecting it as the minimum of the delta 1 and delta 2, which we're imposing on this. And basically, you know, which we have to have from this, actually. Basically, now from precise definition, 1 divided by g of x minus 1 divided by m is equal to, well, if you just multiply it, you get the common denominator, right? Like this one here, like I showed before, m minus g of x divided by m times uh, g of x right here, absolute value. And I've, and I've showed above here when we selected, yeah, when we selected for the first delta 1, we selected this epsilon 1 as uh, absolute value of m divided by 2 we ended up getting, and just moving uh, stuff around, we ended up getting 1 divided by g of x times m uh, as equaling to less than 2 times m, m squared right here. So we'll write this part right here, that's for this one, 2 divided by m squared. And now when we just impose the new delta 2, which is for the top case, right here, uh, g of x minus m, or m minus g of x is matter because you have absolute value. And we just selected this one right here. We impose it because remember epsilon 2 or epsilon could be any number. So we're just going to write now epsilon divided by 2, uh, and, uh, and I mean m squared divided by 2 times by epsilon. And as you can see, these cancel, so we're just going to be left with this delta right here. So basically, we've proven the, the limit uh, for this one here because we have this we have this number, which is the, the minimum of these two, and this is for any number uh, epsilon right here. And thus we've proven this one right here, limit as x is a of 1 divided by g of x equals to 1 divided by m, because we just proved that the precise definition uh, works for this one right here. So that's all you gotta do. And now all we have to do is actually just apply the product law or the law 4, which I've proven in my earlier video. Watch the uh, video link below in the description to get uh, basically proof of this one. So basically uh, now, to uh, basically to apply this product law, we just write this quotient law in the form of a product. So this equals to limit as x approaches a now of f of x times by, well, the limit we just proved times by 1 divided by g of x right here. So now instead of a quotient, we have a product of uh, base f of x times 1 divided by g of x. And from the product law, we get the basically the limit of, of a product is the product of limits right now. So this one using the product law at limit as x approaches a, this is going to be equal of f of x multiplied by the limit as x approaches a of 1 divided by g of x. Yeah, and that's uh, this one right here. And now we've proven uh, basically from the top part, well this one we know we were defined it as L, and this one right here as 1 divided by m right now. And this one we, we've just proven, and this one we were given, so then this just equals to L divided by M, and we've proven the uh, the uh, quotient law. Yeah, so I just write it down here. So we've proven the quotient law. Do we just prove that it's going to be L divided by M right here, or the uh, limit of a quotient is a quotient of a limit here? Now that's all we did was apply this uh, product law right here to get it on this uh, product here. So we, we so we could just uh, rearrange the quotient into a product. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn from this. Uh, it's a pretty long proof, but it's uh, once you get your head around the precise definition, it's pretty precise, and the idea will that we could basically assign basically whatever value we want for these epsilons, and we chose this one. But just the thing is, if you choose this, you need this now, this delta. So you need this specific delta for this, and this one's gonna be delta two, and we just choose the minimum of this one as this uh, this delta right here. Well, uh, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this uh, proof, and uh, never download the notes in Dropboxing below, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.